memory of Nelson Mandela, a man who rolled up his sleeves and dedicated his life to taking a stand against segregation. In doing so, he united a nation and awoke the world. How do you create a significant memory of such an icon, an art piece that would go beyond a simple portrait? A question that art photographer Martin Osner asked himself for quite some time. Right from his inauguration all the way through until his passing, I, I secretly wish that I would be able to do a, a portrait sitting with Madiba, but this never really materialized. And it's funny how life works because now that the Salt of the Earth portrait has been released, I have met a number of people who could have helped me make this dream a reality. A number of years after Mandela's death in 2013, Osner set about doing a meaningful portrait in memory of this great man. It was about three years after Madiba's death and about six weeks before Mandela Day and I was adamant that I was going to attempt a portrait in honour of this great man. I was really, really battling to come up with a concept. Uh, I decided what I would do is I would, I'd write down all the characteristics of Mandela um, that I'd like to see in this artwork. And this was a fruitless exercise because the list just went on and on and on. And then I, I realized what I actually needed was a statement of some sort that summed up Mandela in one sentence. Early one morning I was preparing for a workshop on hand embellishing of black and white photographs and texture overlays. And I happened to be going through a book of Vic Munzer's where he had done a, a series of photographs called The Sugar People. And at the same time, I was looking through wedding photographs of my parents which had been hand embellished by the photographer. My father was a very humble person and I recalled that when he described anybody of great humility, he would, he would call them the salt of the earth. And that was it. The idea was planted. All I needed to do now was to create the portrait. Although I didn't have a clear idea of how I was going to do this portrait, I did know that two things were important. Firstly, it needed to be slightly abstract and only realized at a distance. I felt that this would signify Mandela's life where the South African people and the world at large only really understood his true character late in his life. And the second thing was that when he laughed, he laughed with so much joy that his eyes would close. And I needed to make sure that this came through in the portrait as well. Using a number of techniques, the artist set about completing the portrait. In order to deconstruct the impression further and to move it slightly more abstract, I decided to use a technique known as a nitro transfer. With reference to the public photograph of Mandela with the correct facial expression, Osner started by making a black powder impression, which he then embellished with charcoal. Initially, I decided that I was going to try to shade the transfer which I was going to use as a background and this didn't work at all. I knew that I wanted to use salt as, as an overlay and then the thought came instead of using the salt really as just one single layer to add texture, what would happen if I used the salt in various thicknesses? This could then bring the shading um, that I was actually looking for. As salt is slightly translucent, the artist placed the impression on a backlight to amplify the shape of the crystals. What the eye sees versus what the camera records is very different. So I decided to rather work directly through the lens of the camera. Using live view on his camera, Martin worked the salt thickness into correct proportions with a dry brush. This created shading which immediately brought the artwork to life. 
Meticulously, he then set about removing single salt crystals that were either too large or had fallen into the wrong areas. A combination of backlight for shape and side light for texture, the portrait was photographed and processed as a final piece. To be honest, I wasn't really sure whether this was going to work. And then when I opened the photograph on the computer, I was so excited. It had that impressionistic feel that I was looking for. The texture was there. The depth was there. It was, it was more than I could have ever wanted. Initially, I decided to release the print as a limited edition. And then just before Mandela Day, I changed my mind. You know, Mandela never limited himself in any way or form. So, limiting this print just felt out of character. At the same time, I also decided to include two of his statements that he made in the Ravonia trial where he was tried for treason. So, I decided to include them at the bottom of the portrait. Over the last few years, I was asked to donate prints to be auctioned towards raising funds for children's cancer. And I jumped at the opportunity. And every year, the winning bid has just increased beyond my wildest expectations. You know that the salt of the earth print now feels like a like a living portrait in memory of a wonderful human being. Mandela said there can be no greater gift than that of giving one's time and energy to helping others without expecting anything in return. A unique artwork that encapsulates the legacy of a great man and a portrait fitting of an icon. May you rest in peace.